Not only will this system help you from having a negligent discharge. Sorry, I freaked you guys out. Ah! Andy! Ah! Oh! That's so loud! But it'll also help you avoid the legal, social, and economic consequences of having one. Someone told me once that there are two types of people, those who have experienced negligent discharges and those who will. Now, I don't believe this is factual, but I do know of many people who have experienced negligent discharges, also known as NDs. Some of these individuals were novices, while some were very experienced shooters. But regardless of the circumstances, they all shared the same thing in common, embarrassment, fear, and the potential for serious injury or death. Now, I personally have never had an ND, and I actually don't even like saying that because I know that pride comes before the fall. However, I don't say that to be prideful, but as a testament to the safety system I'm gonna share in this video. Even if you've been shooting for years and some of the content in this video is familiar, I'd be willing to bet that you're probably not doing some of the techniques I'll cover that'll help you avoid an ND. And if you know anyone who is new to guns, then please share this video with them. Also, do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button because it's well known that YouTube does not like to recommend content like this. Okay. First, let's talk about why negligent discharges occur. Fundamentally, they are due to two things, ignorance and or carelessness. Ignorance being lack of knowledge on how to safely handle or operate a gun, and carelessness simply being an apathetic approach to firearms ownership. There are several common activities where NDs occur, but the most common is pulling the trigger while thinking the gun is unloaded without actually first checking that it's unloaded, or mindlessly checking if it's unloaded, but not consciously checking. I've never known anyone to say, yeah, I wasn't sure if it was loaded, so I pulled the trigger to find out. Almost always, the person says that they thought it was unloaded. The first thing you do before unloading the gun or before even handling the gun is assume that it's loaded. Even if you just saw three people confirm that it's unloaded, still assume that the gun is loaded and then confirm for yourself. Okay, next, with the gun oriented in the safest direction and your finger high and off the trigger, you wanna press the magazine release, which is usually located right here, and you wanna push that in. Some of them are like a lever and you have to push down, but you wanna push that to release the magazine. Now that you've released the source of ammunition, you wanna grab the top of the slide with your non-firing hand and then cycle the slide at least three times while keeping the muzzle oriented in the safest direction. And if there was a round inserted, it should eject during this process. Now that was a dummy round. It wasn't a live round, but I wanted you to see what's gonna happen if there's a round in the chamber when you do that process. The reason I say to do it at least three times is because if you forget to remove the magazine, you'll eject several rounds, and this should give you a clue that you forgot to remove the magazine. But assuming you didn't forget and no more than one round ejected out of the chamber, the next thing you wanna do is lock the slide to the rear. And you do this by taking your thumb on your firing hand, pushing up on the slide catch release, and then pulling the slide to the rear until that catches in the little notch on the slide, and this will lock the slide to the rear. If for whatever reason you cannot do this, either because you don't have the strength or you're just having difficulty with that slide catch release, then what you can do is you can take an empty mag, making sure that it's empty, you can insert that empty mag into the gun and then rack the slide all the way. And then what will happen is the magazine follower will actually push up on the slide catch and cause it to engage with the slide. It also helps when you're doing this, if you don't use a magazine, to hold the gun like this, obviously with it oriented in a safe direction, and you wanna do almost like a push and pull motion. I'm sorry, you do a push and push motion with your hands pushing in opposite directions. So this hand's gonna be pushing this way, this hand on the slide is gonna be pushing this way, while this thumb is engaging that slide catch. So you're gonna push up on the slide catch, push in both directions, and then it should lock to the rear. Now with the magwell empty and the slide locked to the rear, you want to visually and physically inspect the gun, ensuring it that the chamber is in fact empty. So you want to take your fingers and insert them into the mag well to make sure there's no magazine, and then insert them into the ejection port and inside the chamber to make sure that there's in fact no round inside that chamber. And for those of you who don't know the difference between a loaded and an empty chamber, here you go. The chamber on the left is empty, whereas the chamber on the right has a cartridge loaded. And if during the checking process, you still notice something in the chamber, it's possibly you have a damaged extractor. If this is the case, you can either do one of two things. For those of you who know what you're doing, you can try to remove the cartridge yourself, 
Or you can insert something into the chamber and the magwell like a cable lock that should have come with the gun when you purchased it and then you can transport it in this condition to an armorer to get it fixed. The cable lock will disable the slide from locking into battery and also prevent the gun from firing. But assuming the chamber is empty and you have visually and physically confirmed this, the next thing you want to do is return the slide to battery. But rather than just dropping the slide like this, I want you to slowly ride the slide forward while meditating on the chamber to ensure it's empty. And here's what I mean by that. I want you to slowly ride the slide forward while focusing on the outline of that chamber to make sure it's empty. The reason I say this is because it forces you to be intentional and to slow down rather than mindlessly going through the motions. Think of this as one final check so that if you missed one of the other steps, hopefully you'll catch it here. So once again, after visually and physically confirming that the gun is empty, slowly, slowly ride the slide forward while observing that empty chamber. Now, some of you might be commenting, oh, you're never supposed to ride the slide forward because it can induce malfunction, blah, 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 blah. And yeah, of course, you're right. If you're talking about when you're loading. However, we are not loading the gun in this context. We are simply taking the time to ensure the chamber is empty before storage, dry fire, packing it in your check baggage or whatever. Once again, carelessness is one of the root causes for negligent discharges. So to avoid this, what you need to do is care more by slowing down and not just going through the motions. Now, another activity where negligent discharges are common is during dry fire. And for the newbies out there, dry fire is simply training with an unloaded gun. And this is why I will only dry fire with a gun that has been rendered inert. This can be done by using something as simple as these devices made by Barrel Block, which is a little piece of plastic that inserts into the chamber and it prevents any live rounds from being loaded. So even if I took a magazine and loaded a dummy round inside of it, you have this little thing blocking the chamber. If I try to load that, it's going to stop and prevent the round from loading into the chamber. They also make these cool devices for the magazines where if you wanna practice speed reloads or something like that, it depresses the magazine follower down so that whenever you insert that into the gun, it allows you to cycle the slide and it won't cause the slide to lock to the rear like a magazine normally will when it's unloaded. So Barrel Block makes these devices that block the barrel, hence the name, and then also allow you to train with an unloaded mag. So those are pretty cool. And some more expensive options include these devices from Mantis. And I'll talk about this one first. This is their Laser Academy system which works with the handgun it comes with this little laser device that once again you insert it into the chamber and now the gun's rendered inert because even if i were to insert a magazine with a round in it I'll show you in a second it will not allow the round to insert into the chamber so if i took this dummy round and inserted it and tried to run that slide all that's gonna happen is a very similar thing that happened with the barrel block. The round will not get loaded. So that's another safety device that can prevent you from having a very bad day. But the cool thing about the Laser Academy is that not only does it do that and block the chamber for safety reasons, but it also fires a laser out of the board. So whenever you shoot it, it fires a laser out of the board. Just like that. Every time you pull the trigger, the striker or firing pin strikes the back of that laser device and activates the laser. And this can be used in conjunction with the Mantis Laser Academy app and their smart targets so that your dry fire training will be much more effective because you'll be getting data and feedback. And let's be real, who doesn't want to shoot lasers out of their gun? And then for ARs, AKs, and other similar semi-automatic guns, the Mantis Blackbeard is by far the best dry fire training tool currently on the market in my opinion. This device fires a laser out of the board similar to the Laser Academy system, but it also pairs with their Mantis Laser Academy to track the motion of your gun. So with this system, you can analyze your follow through, over travel, split times, and several other metrics. And of course, I have an affiliate link below if you wanna support the channel at no extra cost to you. But regardless of what you use for dry fire, I strongly urge you to use something that renders your gun inert. This way, even if you make a mistake by inserting a loaded magazine, it won't result in a negligent discharge. I hope this video was helpful and please don't forget to share it with someone else. Thank you so much for watching and as always, train to a higher standard.
data and feedback on how you're performing. And let's be real, who doesn't want to shoot lasers out of the gun of their bore? Out of the gun of their bore? I sound like a, I sound, I sound like a politician. <laughs> who doesn't want to shoot lasers out of the gun of their bore? <laughs> Put a pistol on a brace, it becomes a, becomes a gun. And then for ARs, AKs, and other simmers, simmer, 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 simmer automatics. Good gosh, man. And of course I have a, and of course I have an affiliate link, affiliate. Curious if anyone's ever had this issue. You can see it's like the round is getting stuck in the magazine. I had this issue happen about a week ago at a competition. If I tap it, it like releases it. I don't know if there's something wrong with a follower. I'm gonna have to check that, but let me know in the comments if any of you guys have ever seen this with a Glock 48 or 43X style mags. Just try it again, let's see what happens. <clears throat> so, I'm gonna try to demonstrate the what happens when someone forgets to remove the magazine thing. We'll see if I can get it to not malfunction this time. Yep, did it again. So look, it, it feels like there's no mag. It's not locking to the rear or anything because it's doing that. Focus, focus, there we go. Hmm. Let's try another mag. This is number one, I'm gonna mark that one. It's another reason I like to mark my mags is because if they malfunction on me, I like to make sure that I know which one malfunctioned. I hope it's just that mag. I had another issue with one of the other mags. Again, these are OEM mags. These aren't the, um, can't remember that brand, but they make the 15 round mags. But it was like, almost the tolerance was a little wide, and so it would not fall freely whenever you push the magazine release. So I marked that one, it's just a training mag now. But let's see how this does. So I got all dummy rounds. I did just fine. No issues. Let's try it again. But yeah, comment below if you've ever had that with a 43X or 48 mags. No issues with this one. It's a good thing that's the one I usually carry. But number one, you are you're gonna get a marking. You're gonna become a training mag. All right, well, that was the extra for this video, I guess, unintentional, but thank you again for watching. And as always, train to a higher standard.